Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again, it is Sunday, and that means it's time for the Texas Gun Vault Poll Question of the Week, a weekly vlog that I put out where I ask you as my viewers and subscribers about something that deals with guns, gun culture, politics, current events, the news, or something fun like EDC that I want to get your thoughts and opinions on. And this week's question deals with two rifles that I have recently reviewed. And as of releasing this video, only one report has been released, and tomorrow the other one will. And that is going to be on the two reference rifles from Lewis Machine and Tool. We have the Estonian reference rifle and both of these rifles are the civilian versions of their military counterparts and the contracts that were given to both Estonia and New Zealand that LMT1 and then of course as I mentioned we do have the New Zealand contract rifle as well both of these are extremely high quality but the one thing I talk about in those reviews is that these two firearms are extremely different. They have a completely different operating system. And this is going to go back to what I think people in the AR-15 world have been debating for a long time. Is what's better, direct impingement or a short stroke gas piston? Now this is one of those things like AR versus AK that I don't think we're really going to solve in one video, but I think it's really kind of cool to get everyone's thoughts and opinions and kind of figure out why do you feel that way? Because there's definitely pros and cons to each. So with all of that said, let's dive right in to this week's question. This week's question is going to relate to a couple of range reports I will be releasing this week. I have the opportunity to review both the LMT New Zealand and LMT Estonian contract example rifles. One is direct impingement and the other uses a short stroke gas piston system. I find that through my reviews I have come to like and dislike something about each type of operating system. But I was wondering what you all thought about the subject. When it comes to AR-15 type rifles, do you prefer direct gas impingement or piston operated guns? And why? And so as I said, this is going to be one of those issues that's never going to be settled. It's going to go on for decades and who knows, maybe even centuries. The AR versus the AK. The 9mm versus the 45. But this is kind of a subset, because if you're already into ARs, you're going to like one or two, or maybe you like both of them for different reasons, which is kind of like how I feel about the subject. But I know there are some people that are really passionate, because after all, when I review one of these types of rifles, I often get a member of the other camp saying, well, that gun's a piece of junk, because it has a piston in it. It's not the way Eugene Stoner designed. And then the other people are going to say, well, the Direct gas impingement is so 70 years ago. The gun runs dirty. It poops where it eats when it comes to the feeding mechanism and the bolt and the bolt carrier. You need a piston like an AK. That's the more proven design. I understand both sides of the argument. But I was really curious what you all thought, mainly because I trust your opinion, that I like to see where my viewers rest on all of these subjects because sometimes I learn a lot from you. Now I have my personal opinions and as I think I've already said, I like both systems but for different reasons. But I like one more than the others. But let's dive into this week's results and see what you all had to say. With 609 votes this week, as of me filming this video, we have direct gas impingement, lighter and the way Eugene Stoner intended, 63%. Piston operated, runs cleaner, cooler, and more reliable, 35%. And something else, explained in the comments, 3%. Now, the results actually kind of surprised me because I know I have a lot of people who watch my channel that number one like AKs and they like, I think, I'm going to say this in kind of a nice way, more complex firearms. They go, wow, pistons are new to ARs, therefore they must be better. And I actually thought the piston side of things was going to win, but direct impingement won, which actually made me happy because... This is the one that I would have voted for. So let's go through each one of these and I'll give you guys my thoughts. Direct impingement. So here we have the LMT New Zealand rifle and it does have that cool quad rail on it but it has a gas impingement system. And as I said, it's the way Eugene Stoner designed it. So what are the pros and cons to each system? Well, I think the pros of the DI guns, number one, is its weight. Man, 
I can tell you one of the most eye-opening experiences of my gun collecting life was when I was actually able to hold an AR-15A1 or an M16A1 for the very first time. Now, when I got into guns about 10 to 15 years ago, we had already kind of switched to a carbine length gun over the rifle. So we're already dealing with 16 or 14 and a half inch rifles versus a 20 inch barreled rifle. So in theory, these guns should already be lighter. And the way people were decking out their rifles with big old quad rails, tons of accessories, heavy barrels for accuracy, these carbines were getting kind of heavy, but I didn't know any better. And then one day I was able to hold an M16A1 and I was blown away with how light it was. Here we had a 20 inch pencil barrel AR-15 or M16 and it was so incredibly light. And I could understand why this would be such an amazing tool for a soldier in the field. Because as I've mentioned in other videos, or the saying goes, ounces become pounds. And I can only imagine having to be out in the field for days and days and days, having to carry around a heavy rifle with all this gear. Man, you want something that is light. And I really think Eugene Stoner figured it out, creating a gun that had aluminum receivers, it had polymer in the stock and in the hand guards. It was exceptionally light with a pencil barrel. Man, it just changed my mind. I was like, this really is the way to go. Eugene Stoner figured it out on day one. And ever since then, we've gotten away from the real vision and the real purpose of what the M16 or the AR-15 originally was. Now, a con to the system, of course, as I've already mentioned, it poops where it eats. Essentially, it's taking the gas from the front of the firearm through a little tube into the bolt carrier, and it expands the bolt in the bolt carrier, and that cycles the action. And of course, you're gonna get a lot of carbon buildup, a lot of particulate from the unburnt gas. It's just the way that it operates. It has fewer parts, and it's lighter, but man, can an AR that is direct gas impingement get really, really dirty. And so that was the big problems in the Vietnam era. So we had a lot of people when they first came out with the M16 having problems and jams because they were told you don't need to clean your rifles when actually it had to deal with the powder that they were using. But you really do need to clean these guns. They're not self-cleaning and because essentially all that gas is coming into that bolt carrier, it gets dirty really fast. So if you've ever cleaned an AR-15 after shooting at maybe a thousand rounds, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now there is other pros and cons to both systems. One of the pros to a DI gun, especially if you have a machine gun, and this is going to be more for military applications, is that gas tube kind of acts like a fuse. And the way it does this is essentially if you're going to run your rifle on full auto and let's say you are in the heat of battle and you are just dumping round after round after round and potentially you're going to overheat your gun, that gas tube can actually melt in half and will stop the action of the firearm. Now I know probably in the moment that's a bad thing, but when it comes to the longevity of the firearm and the rifle, it's actually a good thing. It can protect the barrel. It can protect other components inside of the rifle. So maybe on the civilian side, you're not going to get that gun that hot. Who knows? Maybe if you're doing a ton of mag dumps with a suppressor, you might actually blow a gas tube. But it's actually meant to do that. Eugene Stoner designed it that way. I kind of find that to be pretty ingenious. Now, when it comes to a short stroke piston firearm, where you have the gas block up here and you have that piston or that op rod driving that carrier, of course you don't get as much gas and particulate into the carrier, but you can actually burn out the barrels a lot faster in full auto fire. Now, something to be very careful about is that all that heat, which normally would get dissipated into the upper receiver in a DI gun, on a piston gun, it's all going to be out here. Now, when I reviewed this rifle, I didn't show it on camera, but actually I accidentally touched this gas block a little bit with my thumb. I was just moving the rifle. Let me tell you, it gets hot. Now, if you've ever fired an AK for a prolonged period of time, it's the same thing. The front of that gun gets really really hot and you have to be really careful. So that's one of the downsides. Now, the opposite when it comes to the piston system is the weight. I've always found that the piston systems 
just way down a gun. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be an AR-15. It can be another rifle, like a Bushmaster ACR or a SCAR-16 or 17S. All those use short-stroke piston systems as well. So you either have a bigger and heavier bolt carrier group or you have an op rod. All this stuff, for me, makes the rifles feel a little bit front heavy. Now, it's not that much, and they do a great job of trying to lighten the rifles, but you do add a lot of weight and you add a lot of mechanics mechanical complexity. Remember, the more parts you have in a machine, the more likely something is going to break. And speaking of things breaking, well, if you have a part breakage in a piston-driven AR-15 or an AR-15 style rifle, well, you might have a hard time getting parts at times because unlike a DI gun that is a standardized system, Piston systems are not. So an LMT piston system might be completely different than an Adams Arms piston system or the FN piston system. And so everything is proprietary to that particular design and that rifle. And personally, I think when it comes to the longevity of a design, that can be a bad thing. After all, we already know that DI guns are gonna be around forever. We just have to accept that. And as long as you have a DI gun, you're going to be able to buy new gas tubes. You're going to be able to buy gas blocks. There's not going to be any issues with that. And pretty much any company's gas block is going to fit on any barrel. Well, as long as they have the right size. And we have all the standardized links for gas tubes. When it comes to piston systems, unfortunately, we don't have that. But now let's talk about the piston operated runs cleaner, cooler, and more reliable. Let's talk about that last thing too, the runs reliable. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I've shot a lot of rounds through a lot of both DI and piston guns, and I really have never had a major issue with both. But I can tell you when it comes to the reliability or the perception of reliability, piston is always going to win. As I mentioned, the gun runs cooler. It also runs a lot cleaner. But a lot of people and gunsmiths say that that op rod system or that piston system really makes the gun more reliable because it can function and break through a lot of other things that maybe a DI gun can't. If it gets a little bit of gunk in that gas system of a DI gun, it can slow you down. But with a piston gun, just like an AK-47 and its historic reliability, well, you kind of get that in this AR platform with a piston. So I've never had an issue with either. I've never noticed a reliability difference in either, but maybe if you're in the military or you're somebody that runs tens of thousands of rounds through a gun, well, maybe a piston gun would be the better way to go, but only you know your circumstance. Now, for me personally, I like both. I like the pros and cons of both. I love cleaning a piston AR because it is so much easier. But I like shooting gas impingement ARs because they're so much lighter. And I really think that Eugene Stoner got it right. So maybe I should have put a fourth option and went, uh, I like both. But if I can only pick one, I'm gonna go with a DI gun and vote in the majority this week. But I can definitely see why some people would want a piston gun as well. But that brings up a whole nother question. Is a piston AR-15 really an AR-15? Because it's so much different than its original design. Then finally we have something else explained in the comments and that only got 3%. And I think the people that commented on this were talking about other actions like the radial delay blowback and so forth. But when it comes to AR-15s, I'm pretty sure we only have piston and direct impingement, but I thought the radial delay blowback was only for nine millimeter or pistol caliber cartridges in AR platforms. But I'd have to look that up. I don't know if I've ever seen one in 5.56 or 300 blackout, but just because I haven't seen it or shot it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I'm just not personally familiar with it. And if you know of one, let me know in the comments section below. So that's what I think about it. Obviously, I'm a DI pattern gun, and you guys now know why, because I think Eugene Stoner got it right in the first place. So with all of that said, now you know my thoughts, let's see what you guys had to say with this week's top rated comments. And with the top rated comment of the week, we have MC who says, there are pros and cons to both. It would be nice to start seeing some standardization of piston systems for interchangeability, just like other parts. And you know, I can see why that's the top rated comment of the week is I completely agree. Now, when I see these comments, 
I'm seeing them for the first time when I'm filming this video. I try not to have the comments affect my personal opinions. And I'm kind of glad to say he saw the same issues with the piston system that I do in that they're not standardized and I would like to see a better standardization. So who knows, maybe if a military around the world, who knows, the Estonian contract rifle, for example, really takes off, maybe we will see that standardization. Then we have Chris Binder who says, Love the PWS long stroke piston system. It has been amazing for me, especially suppressed. For a end of the world rifle, I would choose the eye just because there are a lot more of them for replacement parts. We live in reality right now, so my PWS has less felt recoil, runs cleaner, and is much better with my can on it than any of my DI guns. Well, another person that talks about the interchangeability of parts. Yeah, in an in-the-world scenario, you gotta go with DI because the number of DI guns over piston guns, it's not even in the same ballpark. We know that DI guns rule the world. Then we have Joshua Jackson who says, also with direct impingement, replacement parts are gonna be a lot easier to get should a part break. And man, oh man, does it sound like everyone's on the same page on this one. So great minds think alike. Then we have my good friend Brian Edgett who says, I have DI guns and a long stroke piston gun. I found each has a good side and a downside. The long stroke piston is less likely to be ammo sensitive, a good thing, but it is front heavy and louder. And yeah, too, the piston guns always seem louder to me. I don't like that if I'm not going to be running a suppressor. The DI is lighter and less expensive, plus easier to maintain. I'm also under the impression that DI guns are more accurate. Not all of them are, but most are. And that's interesting. I don't think I've ever noticed an accuracy difference between direct impingement and piston. I think I shoot both of them pretty darn well. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. Maybe because the piston is attached to the barrel, it causes the barrel to move a little bit versus the DI gun. I don't know. I'll have to do a little bit of research into that. Thanks for bringing up a good point, Brian. And then finally, we have my good friend Matt Moore who says, I don't have a ton of ARs and my experience is less than many others, but I really like DI. It's lightweight, soft recoiling, and accurate. I think Stoner got it right. Sure, you have to clean and lubricate it more frequently than a piston system, but I clean all of my guns after every range visit shooting anyways. And you know, Matt and I are on the same page on so many things. He's a great guy and lends so many awesome firearms to the channel. And so this is another thing where we always joke about the things that we disagree on, like Ford and Chevy or AK and AR. Well, I'm glad that we both agree on this. So it sounds like all of you guys are kind of on the same page that I am on. But please don't think that just because I like DI, I don't like Piston. I like both. Both of these guns here are on loan to the channel from my good friend and local subscriber D. And let me tell you, I'm interested in purchasing both. So I'm going to be really sad having to return these because I've fallen in love with both of them. I think I'm going to get the New Zealand rifle before the Estonian one, but I definitely want both. So it's not me being a snob, but I can see the pros and cons of each. But if I could only have one, it definitely would be a direct impingement firearm. So that's the Texas Gun Vault poll question of the week. Did we settle the debate finally? Well, I don't think so because I know there's gonna to be tons of new piston guns out there and there's gonna be people out there that love the DI guns for whatever reason. It's all cool. I like them both. There's pros and cons and I'm glad to see that so many of you guys are open-minded and like both but also agree with me. Huh. That's different. Many times when I post a video, everyone disagrees with me. So I'm going to take this as a win. So if you would like to participate in next week's poll, please go to the community tab of my YouTube channel. I will post a link in the description. Go over there, see what the poll is about, vote, comment, and like other people's comments so we can get the top rated comment of the week. So let me know what you guys think. Did I get it wrong? Are you a member of the minority in this vote? And do you think all the DI people are a bunch of idiots? Well, let us know in the comments. So, as always, thanks for watching.